and welcome to Murphy's Garden. It's a bit of an overcast day today, but you join us at the RHS Tatton Park Flower Show. So we'll go and have a look around and see if we can get lots of inspiration for our own gardens. The Tatton Park Flower Show is located in Cheshire. And so for us here in Shropshire, the neighboring county, it is the nearest of the RHS shows. It's a wonderful family day out with approximately 65,000 visitors attending each year. It is located in the grounds of, of one of Cheshire's best love estates, Tatton Park. There is so much to see, including a massive floral marquee in which 56 of the nation's top nurseries and plant societies exhibit their plants and share their expertise, as well as judged exhibits, including show gardens and the all important Young Designer of the Year competition. I know a lot of people are put off Chelsea because of the crowd and so some of the other shows such as Tatton are located in a larger setting and so feel much less crowded and therefore it is easier to get up close to the gardens and speak to many of the designers, many of whom are just starting out in their careers and so it is the chance to take a glimpse into the future of garden design. So we'll begin our tour with the long borders. This was new to the show this year and I think it was very successful. The borders were sensory themed and designers aimed to capture and highlight the importance for gardens to work with all our senses, not merely on what they look like. It was amazing to see how this theme was interpreted in so many different ways. This border encourages visitors to focus on the tactile nature of plants as well as their colour and scent. Designed for an open, well-draining site, it features a mixture of plants that offer a unique textural experience from spiky to soft and everything in between. The border is anchored by architectural evergreen conifers, then surrounded by soft, fluffy grasses. Emerging between are spiky perennials such as sea hollies, all in a colour palette of blue, yellow and silver. Combining her passion for both soil and cake, the designer has created this border as an eye-opening cross-section of the joy and promise that lies beneath our feet. Surrounding the cake, a gentle planting scheme of purple and white, including verbena bonariensis, echinacea and salvias. Soil, as well as being a gardener's best friend, offers a range of sensory experiences depending on its health, composition and quality. Every gardener is looking for a crumb structure, that perfectly friable arrangement of particles that allows a plant to flourish. A slice of earth aims to raise awareness of the importance of soil, as well as an afternoon tea with a piece of cake. Both sensory and sensitive, this border showcases colourful edible planting alongside ecologically sensitive growing. At its heart are the principles of companion planting. The designers have created a vibrant vegetable border with plants such as brassicas and herbs supporting each other to grow. For example, nasturtiums help to deter whitefly, a common courgette pest. At the centre, a mix of pollinating friendly flowering perennials provides a joyful backdrop and attracts bees, flies and butterflies to pollinate the crops. Colour and texture invite visitors to interact with the planting while the hum of pollinators adds to its sensory qualities. This garden was awarded a gold medal and I think it deserves it. Lovely, lovely colours and I particularly love this beautiful monarda. Isn't it lovely? Or bee balm as it's also called. So this garden is an inspiration high. We can all perhaps get our vegetable gardens to look a bit prettier. So there's lots of plants in here that are edible. So you've got the calendula, you've got um, sage leaves, lovely, look lovely together. You've got dill. Um, what else? Kale. So there's beautiful different coloured leaves of kale, which I have got, but mine don't look quite so nice. But what do you do when you've got to net them from the caterpillar? <laughs> and there's different types of chard and chamomile. So lots of Lots of beautiful edibles and cabbages. Modern day technology inhibits our interaction with nature, often leading to sensory overload and mental health problems. Responding to this disconnect, this border contains three large wooden screens, each smaller than the previous one, representing the dominance of technology and our tunnel vision. A reclaimed bathtub speaks of the relaxation we can feel when surrounded by nature, away from those screens. Planting is serene and enriching to our senses without being overwhelming, with shrubs, bamboo and perennials. Another garden which won a gold medal. A stimulating multi-sensory experience, this border embraces bold colour and strong forms in a design intended for a client experiencing sight loss. 
Through it, the designers hope to inspire a wider audience to experiment with vivid colours, interesting textures and aromatic and auditory plants, a purple and yellow colour theme featuring lavender, salvia, achillea and penstemon, contrast with silvery white stachys, artemisia and anuthra, which bring a twilight glow as daylight fades. There are plenty of drought tolerant and nature friendly plants offering a long season of interest. And this is the designer, one of the designers, Emma, um, just by this beautiful garden, which is a gold medal winner. Designed to engage all ages in a sensory experience, this border has fun at its heart, from the playfulness of steeper tenuissima grasses to the colour gradient sweeping from orange to blue and its tactile edging of textural pebbles and bark. An abacus trail weaving between tactile, edible and scented edging plants provides an activity for youngsters and parents and inspires all generations to explore the border together thereby nurturing family relations and helping children's cognitive development while fostering an early connection to nature. The key features of this border are the two large oak frame windows, which once formed part of Knutsford train station. Upcycled as climbing plant supports, they demonstrate the breadth of recycling creativity that can be employed in a garden. Among and around the old windows, a variety of colourful pollinating friendly plants are framed from different viewpoints through the structure. The central motif of Sensing Time is an infinity loop willow structure that represents nature's cyclical and infinite time patterns. The planting surrounding the structure is divided into sections, with species chosen to represent the look and feel of each of our four seasons through colour, form and scent. Inspired by the UK seaside, this border is made up of plant species found thriving along the British coast. The designers wanted to capture the sensory experience of a visit to our shores. The soft touch of grasses trailed through the fingers, the whispering of the sea air through the dunes, the sight of a familiar coastal favourite such as sea thrift, sanguisorba and marum grass. Adding to the literal theme, a miniature broad walk splits the border into two and creates new views from the centre. Colourful perennials and shrubs chosen for their mind-forming habit or globular flowers fill this border. Edibles offer leaves to be picked and scents to be inhaled, while tactile foliage brings a further sensory element. Fragrant flowers add to the oil factory appeal, while birds and bees attracted by pollen, nectar and berries could be heard tweeting and buzzing. A calming colour scheme of purple, blue, white and yellow invites relaxation. Named Colour of the Year by Pantone, Viva Magenta is the inspiration for this full sun border that stimulates the senses. Beautiful, bold and fierce, it is full of much needed optimism in the post-pandemic era. While Viva Magenta is bright and fun, the designers have added depth with lighter and darker hues and structural forms are softened by delicate foliage and flowers. Inspired by a border the designer created for her own children, this space is all about play. Think lush jungle-like leaves that hide hunting dinosaurs, introduce kids to nature's different textures, colours and shapes. Child and animal safe plants are chosen for their resilience and toughness as well as texture and fragrance. A ridge of boulders evocative of prehistoric landscapes acts as a divider between the sunny, dry side and a more shaded side, reflecting common conditions in home gardens. This border brings to life the living laboratory of an amateur botanist investigating how plants sense the world. The dynamic relationship between plants and their environments is revealed as flowers lean, reach, twist, unfurl and close. Planting is informed by the subjects of scientific research from Darwin's living laboratory to recent work on sound perception in plants and includes a nuthra, which hears the vibration of pollinators' wings and touch-sensitive squirting cucumber that ejects seeds when ripe. Inspired by the West Yorkshire rhubarb triangle, this border celebrates the magical and mysterious interiors of rhubarb forcing sheds where candlelight creates an otherworldly glow and an intense sensory experience. A reclaimed charred timber shed is surrounded by grasses and flowering plants in a palette of vibrant pinks and smoky oranges with dark foliage representing the rhubarb leaves. Shining a light on the beauty and importance of wild foraging, this border caters for each of our other senses too. It contains wild flowers that attract bees and birds, fragrant herbs and soft grasses and plenty of edibles such as mushrooms and raspberries to forage. It also offers striking laser cut cortin steel panels and sculptures for contrast. 
biophilic leaf cutouts let light flow through the panels, enabling visitors to glimpse the planting behind. A fruit tree provides an ideal dapple shade environment for mushrooms to thrive. The long borders measure just 6.8 by 1.8 metres, which is 11 square metres, so you can get lots of inspiration for planting ideas in a small area and in different aspects and soil types too. So we'll leave the long borders now and as we head around the showground there are lots of other eye-catching exhibits and the next one we're going to look at is inspired by the Tatton Park estate itself. On the grounds of the Tatton Park estate there is a five acre productive kitchen garden which boasts a 300 year history of propagation. There are three walled gardens, one of which was used for storage, propagation, potting and compost making and plans are afoot to transform this space to combine old and new growing methods to create a sustainable nursery. This show garden is a little sneak peek at what the new nursery might look like and I just love some of the containers they've used to make raised planters. The whole area looks really charming and this little cloche is adorable as is the upcycled furniture used for seed storage so there are some really really good ideas here. This garden highlights the plight of nocturnal pollinating insects such as moths, which we now know are much more effective pollinators than day flying insects. The garden highlights the plants and environments that support these vital pollinators, giving us ideas as to how we can entice them into our own gardens. Light pollution can be detrimental and this garden demonstrates how we can use outdoor lighting sensitively so that we leave light night flying insects undisturbed. This garden is an immersive educational experience featuring digital light projections on the life cycle of moths, allowing us to appreciate the beauty and fragility of these underappreciated insects. This garden takes its name from an architectural mainstay of our region's towns and cities, sometimes referred to as an alleyway or a snicket. A janelle is a narrow passageway that runs between parallel rows of housing. These areas are at best underused, if not outright neglected. The designer of this space, Jason Williams, known as the Cloud Gardener, is passionate about revealing greening up possibilities that exist in the most modest and unlikely of urban spaces. We met Jason, a really lovely man, last year at Tatton and his passion really came across and here he demonstrates how such an area can be transformed and in doing so the community benefits bringing people closer together and taking pride in their surroundings. Just think how much better the country would be if we all set about transforming dark, dingy alleyways into a space like this. This area is full of fantastic ideas which we can all use to transform boring utilitarian spaces such as the bin storage or a wooden fence line into something special. The opportunities are endless. Think upcycling of everyday objects such as a bath or pallet into a planter. Incidentally, this garden will be relocated to Mossside in Manchester where hopefully the community will derive its benefits. The next garden we just loved, this is a very simple and sweet little garden made from lots of upcycled objects such as upturned logs as seats, a York stone table and a shed made from old windows. The Apocothry is a working garden that incorporates natural medicinal species grown for health and well-being and it was inspired by the designer's lifelong passion for this subject. Key plants in this garden include elder, lavender, rosemary, dog rose and verbascum. And the next garden we see is by designer Rachel Platt. And we saw Rachel at last year's Tatton Flower Show in the Young Designer category with her COVID recovery garden. And she's back this year with a beautiful garden which won the People's Choice Award. This garden seeks to highlight some of the physical and mental effects of screen-based technologies on our health. Like the vibrant visuals we see on display, this garden is designed to create a dynamic atmosphere of contrast, providing instant gratification and the feeling of euphoria that tech can provide us. From a distance, that hard landscaping appears flawless with its sharp, clean lines and smooth surfaces. But close up, like technology, it is flawed with hidden imperfections representing the physical and mental health problems that can arise from overuse. The next garden is a modern interpretation of a formal garden centred around outdoor entertaining. So it features this large patio area and seating at its core, providing a comfortable and contemporary setting for outdoor entertaining and socialising with friends and family. While a fully fitted out kitchen transforms cooking into a convivial shared activity that can be enjoyed with guests. 
A tranquil and beautiful garden created for Macmillan, this garden celebrates the generosity and kindness of ordinary people who leave a gift in their will to help future-proof the vital services provided by Macmillan for years to come for people living with cancer. It features a metal pergola over the seating and which appears from above like a ribbon gift wrapping this garden to future users of the services. Another beautifully planted garden. This one raises awareness of the fact that construction has the highest suicide rate of all industries and this garden promotes the mental health benefits of regular access to green spaces. A consultation glade provides a private retreat for one-to-one -one counselling with a reflection pool at the centre of the design. Here an infinity sculpture created using a series of circles illustrates the swirling of negative thoughts in a mind under stress. The undulating landscape promotes an inward-looking design to block out the outside world and create a cocooned private space. The garden is promoting a charitable work of band of builders and mates in mind. It will be relocated to Clatterbridge Hospital, Wirral, after the show. The planting of this calming garden was inspired by the natural environment of an ancient woodland. A minimal palette of white flowers represents remembrance. Plants include rowans, silver birch, black bamboo and ferns. And now for my favourite category, the Young Designer of the Year competition. This is open to designers under 30 years old and it's a terrific launch pad for their future careers. This is Will Scully, last year's winner, and it's definitely worth watching to see who will be designing gardens of the future. This is Nathan Webster, winner of this year's Young Designer of the Year with his garden Off the Grid. This garden aims to show how life can be lived off-grid comfortably yet sustainably and surrounded by nature. The relatively small space includes a sunken luxury lodge with retaining walls made of logs which evoke a forest hideaway but which could even be created in an urban garden. Sandstone steps are nod to the imagined landscape surrounding the site. Planting is lush and green in a woodland style, including ferns, bracken and foxgloves, with plenty to harvest and forage. Height and scale comes from the magnificent pine and birch trees in the garden, and yet all of this does not compromise modern day comforts. We had a long chat with Nathan and he invited us into the garden for a closer look. What struck me most about Nathan is that his ability is made more acute as he comes from a construction and hard landscaping background and as well as having sound plant knowledge and an artistic flair. This is quite a unique attribute in someone so young and means that he is very focused on the practicalities of implementing a garden design such as drainage and soakaways which is every bit as important as aesthetics. Nathan's garden was beautiful and definitely suited this damp British summer day. We saw Camilla Hayes at Tatton last year when she entered the greener border category and was awarded a silver gilt. Back this year with a bigger garden, her garden, Seeking Resilience, explores the joys of living alongside nature and working with ecological processes while maintaining the delicate balance between wilder and more formal design elements. Inspired by her mum's strength during recent cancer treatment, Camilla wanted to create an enveloping space that nurtures resilient people and resilient planting. Camilla has just completed her master's at Sheffield University and so it was a great opportunity to put her theoretical knowledge into practice and it will be exciting to see what she goes on to do next. Camilla's beautiful garden was awarded a silver medal. Ollie Pike, another Sheffield graduate, spent two years working for Harris Bug Studios, gaining valuable experience from the design duo who won a gold medal for their Horatio's garden at this year's Chelsea Flower Show. Ollie's garden takes inspiration from Psalm 27 and seeks to provide an area of protection, reflection, guidance and courage, much like the psalm. This garden, sponsored by the Bible Society, will move to a churchyard in Sheffield and provide a retreat and solace for those coming to terms with grief and loss. Ollie's planting style is quite loose and naturalistic and is made up of pollinator friendly plants and was inspired by native wildflower meadows that can be found in the churchyards all across the UK. These provide both a feast for pollinators and valuable habitat for mammals and insects. Ollie's Garden was also awarded a silver medal. So we'll head now into the floral marquee and this is where nursery exhibitors and plant societies have the chance to showcase their wares and perhaps take home a prestigious RHS medal. There are some beautiful plants to see and also to buy. 
This one is Proctor's Nursery, which specializes in herbaceous perennials, annuals, and shrubs. And this is an adorable and floriferous exhibit, which won a gold medal. Some interesting plants, and as you know, I love perennials. And uh, this is a lovely uh, monada here called berry taffy and a thylictrum called fairy wings. I'm really loving thylictrums at the moment. And this is a nice echinacea called green twister sitting alongside the beautiful pittosporum. It's greeny gray foliage makes a lovely backdrop to these brighter, louder flowers and plants. Oh, and look, here's a lovely little sedalcia. We've seen this quite a bit recently. We saw it at Bridgewater and here it is growing under a liquid amber tree. And on this side, we've got some hotter colors. Here is Rebecca Summerina Fringle Fudge with a yellow achillea and this Rebecca Prairie Sun. And it's next to this really striking berry colored achillea and this is called Sassy Summer Sangria. And more hot colored plants, Echinacea Red Rocket sits next to Rebecca Rudy Mini Yellow Black. And this lovely grass, it's Panicum eleganus Frosted Explosion and the classic Helenium Moorhem Beauty. But it's, in, but it's interesting to see pink mixed in with these colours in the form of this Salvia Jemima's Gem and it seems to work really well. And another very different stand in the Floral Marquee, this one Ottershore Cacti with their display of cacti and succulents and some beautiful different shapes and sizes. And another stand selling cacti and this is Foster's Exotic and Unusual Plants which got a gold medal. And one of the most aesthetically pleasing of stands is Holden Cloth Nurseries. If you're anywhere near Clitheroe in Lancashire, I strongly recommend that you check out this nursery. Their Instagram pictures look amazing, as does their cafe. And as well as selling stunning plants, the stand was brimming with so many lovely ideas from pictures and pots and just gorgeous ways to display curiosities. We love these little twig frames and they were generously giving away little botany sketch postcards. So we took inspiration and we have framed them using twigs and they look really cute. The RHS Master Grower Scheme awards those who go the extra mile and this year it was awarded to Ribble Valley's Holden Clough Nurseries and I can certainly see why. The plants on their stand, as in their nursery, are divided into four types. Cottage garden plants, wildlife friendly species, white garden planting and shade loving woodlanders. And in addition to all their beautiful plants, they were also launching their new planting service called Wonder Garden, which is available nationwide. And there's just so much to see, so many beautiful stands, and it's just incredible um, the lengths the, the exhibitors go to just to make their stands just look so great. They really do. Each one um, has put, you know, put so much work into each and every one. And it's a real credit and um, much appreciated by us, the viewers. And here is another stand of alliums. And we can get lots of ideas of what bulbs to order in the autumn um, to get a display like this in the garden. And this stall had um, dioramas or angels fishing rod, which I actually have growing in my garden. It's taken quite a while to establish. And just some interesting facts. The foliage originates from an underground storage organ called a corm. And as these multiply, they form a substantial clump. Large clumps can be lifted and carefully divided. And this is best done in late winter whilst the plant is dormant. Though evergreen, the leaves are evergreen, old brown leaves can be cut out. Um, the old growth can become quite thatchy and congested in time so cutting the clumps down to the ground about every three years makes room for new foliage to emerge. In the wild bushfires will perform this function and plenty more marquees. I think there are more marquees this year than last year perhaps because of the weather forecast. I certainly don't remember there being this many and inside this one are prize winning vegetables so there's some interesting things to see. And you may notice them, some of them look a little bit wilted, things like the lettuce and things like that, because judging will have taken place um, earlier in the week. So things that aren't quite so robust are starting to wilt a little bit. And wonderful to see the huge array of fruit and vegetables on show. And some of them look almost too perfect. They almost don't look real. Um, certainly um, mine look at, don't look quite so perfect as these, but really lovely to see. And this marquee had some more um, really lovely little stalls. Olivia bought a little botanical print from this one. And there was also um, two French guys selling some brilliant secretaires, which I bought. I fell for their sales pitch because they did look good. And I'll show you those on another video. 
and then lots of like, buildings and sheds and things like we saw, a bit like we saw at um, Chelsea, some beautiful ones. I really like the roof on this one and some greenhouses, of course, as well. Um, this is Hartley greenhouses. And then I also want to show you um, this stall and this, this stall they were selling like, outdoor furniture and things like that. Um, but what I really liked about it was this um, shelving thing at the back, this shelving unit. I thought it was really, really clever. Um, some of the furniture is absolutely beautiful, but this is what stood out for me. I just love this and I really like the idea of doing this behind our seating area at home. But isn't it lovely? We've had a really nice time at Tatton and I think we're going to get kicked out. Everybody else has gone and it's way gone, five o'clock and they're closing. So we've had a really good time, loads more ideas. And we're going to put all these ideas into practice one of these days. But um, thanks very much for watching and join us in the next video. Bye for now. Bye. <laughs>